Lynch, and I have a watercolor class for the beginners. So if, if you know what watercolor is and if you've done it before, you're out of here. Or go get one of the kids or grandkids and have them take a class with you. Do this for a beginner, something for, so I'm going to describe things as though you haven't heard that this is a brush. I've got it real simple, a real simple scene, and here are the materials. As I said, we're going to use one brush, one sheet of watercolor paper, and just make sure it says watercolor paper at the store, and a magic ingredient, Kleenex tissues, so watch for that. It's going to really do be fun. And just two colors. Okay, let's keep it simple. And I want to go step by step so that someone who hasn't painted in watercolor can have a great first experience. I want to get them hooked on the fun that you know about watercolor painting. So this is for the entry level for someone new just to have some fun. You know, if you have a rainy day on the weekend, the kids are home from school, this is it. Let's have some fun, too. I do this with my grandkids. That's how I know why and how to do it. Okay, so I have uh, two colors. One is a ultramarine blue. Now, what I've done is I have paint that comes in a tube. You open the cap, and you squeeze out some paint over on the side of a tray. You don't have to have a palette. You can get a, just a nice big white dish. Put some paint in the corners. Squeeze out enough, or if you have a watercolor set that has different cubes that are in there, squeeze some water on top, let it set for five minutes, you're ready to go. Two colors. That one was ultramarine blue, a nice dark blue. Let's not even get fancy names. We're going to get a dark blue and a brown. Guess what? They call the brown burnt sienna. Why didn't they just call it brown? It's what it is, but it's a burnt sienna color. You can see those two colors. I'll set them aside. One brush, and if you can find an artist brush, not a house painting, but an artist brush, and you could do it with any, but this is an artist brush, not very expensive. It's a synthetic, has nine different kinds of synthetic, but one thing you noticed, it's pretty big. So it's a good size brush, and if you can, test it out, see if it comes to a nice point. So, watercolor paper, two tubes of paint, all those others, pretend like you don't see them, a tray of some kind, get a tall bucket of water, a cloth towel, maybe a sponge, we'll see if we need it, and as I said, the magic ingredient, yeah, just some Kleenex. Now, paper towel has a bumpy pattern, that's why I don't want to use paper towel, I want to use a Kleenex, a tissue. Select a tissue that doesn't have cologne in it or any antiseptic because that's oil. And oil and watercolor, they don't mix. So keep it as just a, the inexpensive kind. So we've got that. Now, I know what you're going to say first thing is you don't know how to draw. I want to keep that part even out of the equation. As long as you can draw, you know, a wavy line. So a wavy line, that's the foreground. Somewhat of a straight line. That's the horizon. That's how careful I did the branches. I did them without even looking. Some trees, a whole bunch of them. Don't worry about it. And if you have a little house in the back, if you can't draw a house, there's no house needed. I have a fence post there. So I want to really keep it simple so that way you can have some fun and kind of paint along with me. Press stop, press pause, you know, fast forward, go back, see it again. So in 10 minutes, we're going to have a finished painting. Does that sound like fun or what? So for those that have been with me through all the snippets I've done for Art Academy Live, this is just meant for the beginners. So I'm going to get some new people started. Hey, someone's got to take my seat in a few years because I'll be out golfing. So anyway, let's have some fun. Now, here's how we go step by step. I take the brush and I bring water over. Now, if you want to, you know, take some water with your sponge and squeeze it out, in the palette, that's fine. It's as simple as that. I want to bring some water to that mixing area tray. Fancy word, palette. Then I touch the brush into the paint, bring it over to that puddle, and swirl it. In other words, I have pure paint. It's kind of thick and gummy, yogurt. Dough. So I want to dissolve the color and make it have a big puddle of paint. And I want to start out with a dark value. Now, you don't know what dark value is. I want it to be the shade that is darker. So there's light shades and dark sage. I won't even use fancy words on you. So I'm going to bring over several times. So I'm dipping in the paint, bringing over here to where the puddle is or you squeezed out some water and you have it there ready to go. Now then, this is how you clean out your brush. You swirl back and forth. You drag it a couple times on the side. Maybe you shake it 
And that's how you clean out the brush. It's an important part. We're going to clean out the brush often because now I want to paint with just water. Yep, just water. So I'm going to take water from my brush over to the paper. Now there's going to be a couple of drips, so I'm going to come over carefully. And that area that's the background or the sky, I'm going to swirl back and forth. So look at how I'm going back and forth with the brush. Now, there's not much water left, so I have to go back over there real fast. I'm here again, and I brought some extra water back over to this area of the painting. And so every now and then when I disappear, I'm just bringing more water. Now, if you really wanted to, I don't have a problem with if you took a wet sponge and you went back and forth. Oh, there's even a little red on the sponge. No big deal. Go back and forth and wet that area. So it's all about putting some water around the house and maybe you could smooth out the water you know back and forth and so I'm just smoothing out the water back and forth and I want you to notice something here I have a little bit of a, of an angle and so I whether it be a roll of tape a extra box of Kleenex and so I mean this is flat and so I'm going to show you on the side. I have about that much of an angle. Can you see about four inches or so, five inches? You know, not, not straight up because the paint will run off the page. So I have a little bit of an angle there. And then I'm going to, that angle was where all the excess water gathers. So I'm going to clean it up. Okay, so we're done just putting water down. Now we got that paint ready. Let's put a little fresh color in there once again. So look in the palette with me and you can see how I how I mix colors. So I grab some fresh paint over here, drop down some fresh paint. And so now I'm going to almost like I'm scooping. You can sense how I'm scooping up paint. Follow with me. We're going to go over to the painting and we're going to start at the top and we're going to put down some paint back and forth and put that right at a good angle there. So I'm just putting paint back and forth and back and forth and guess what? There's water on the page and so as I run out of paint it will become a lighter value. The shade, the tone, it's not as dark at the bottom and it's a little darker at the top. Now you can leave some streaks like that if you want to. If you want to smooth it out you just go back and forth in the other direction and smooth it out. And now I got it smoothed out. But if you'd like to have a cloud, guess what? I'll reach across to you there. That's a cloud maker. I bet you wouldn't have believed it, but yes, that's a cloud maker. So I'm going to roll this Kleenex up, kind of roll it round and round and round. You can do that. So that I'm going to take right over here and set it down and press it. And that's going to take away paint. Off comes the paint. And guess what? There's a cloud. Watch me do that again. So I'm crumpling it up take it over here set it there and just hold it for a second or two you can move it over and roll it a little bit and there's a second cloud so we can have a large medium and a small cloud how about a little my class always like this I call those cloudettes <laughs> you're gonna have Claudette teaching you some classes soon and uh, she always laughs when I use the word cloudette so I've got a large medium and a small cloud just made with the tissue that was pretty easy, so let's do that same thing again. So while you're still there, I'm going to come over there with the sponge. Now, we're done with that part. Just leave it alone for a while. We're going to come back and forth with the sponge, and I'm going to wet the foreground, this front area, the ground. It's going to be, I didn't tell you, but guess what? It's going to be a snowy scene. All right, back over to the palette. Let's grab our brush, and let's pick up some extra paint. And so I've got that big puddle. Once again, I'm going to pick up, just transfer over here, and here I'm going to start. See, by having the water on the page, the paint will go back and forth nice and easy, easily for me. If I didn't have that water on the page, I would have to just do a lot of brush strokes, go over and get some more paint and a brush stroke and more paint and a brush stroke. So that's all right to do it that way if you want to. Back and forth, easy, simple. But now I'm going to show you the snow maker. Watch this. So I'm going to come over here. I grab another tissue. Now this time I'm going to crumple it up kind of gently. And there's just a lot of folds, but I'm not going to, you know, squeeze it real tight. I'm going to gently do that. And so what I'm going to do, watch this. We're going to take and roll this across the page again and again and again. And here comes a wonderful little snow texture going on the painting. So I'm going to do that everywhere. Now don't push too hard because all the paint will disappear. So look at how now what was smooth color. So we're going to leave smooth color for the sky. 
and we're going to have it be kind of bumpy as though there's a nice little texture. You can dab it a little bit if you want to or do as I'm doing the rolling. Get a clean one out there and roll it again and again. And so now look at all the different patterns for the snow texture. Okay, so now one final little thing. What we want to do in watercolor, notice I worked on one section, the sky, and I didn't do any extra. I worked on another section, the ground, and I didn't do any extra because, I'll be right back, because it's time to dry. So before you do two things in watercolor, do one, hit it with the dryer. I'll be right back. I'm going to dry this for you. Okay, that wasn't, <laughs> that wasn't so hard. Didn't know if you could hear me then. So the hair dryer is a good tool for watercolor painters because if it gets too, it all just muddled together. So just keep it simple. You did one thing, you did a, and you let it dry. You did another thing, let it dry. Okay, so this, how do you test it? Let me show you that. You put the back of your hand. Don't touch it this way because there's well, rougher calluses there. You can't feel the temperature. So the back of your hand, if it feels cool, go back and hit that spot. It feels the same evenly. Now, some paper is thick and some is thin, but when you're done now, just straighten it out. I'll talk about watercolor blocks and other things for you another time. So, we've got the paper. I want to grab the brush. Let's go over to that other color, the brown, formerly known as burnt sienna. I'm going to take a little bit of it and that same idea. I brought water to the palette. I cleaned out the blue. I wanted a nice clean brown for one spot and a mixture for the third spot. And that's all this painting is about. So I have taken that brown, dissolved it. Now I'm going to show you a little watercolor trick. I'm rolling the brush and so that's bringing this point, kind of a spiral motion going round and round. Instead of just touching it this way and I flattened out the brush. But as I pull the brush off the palette, I'm rolling with my hand. I'll exaggerate there, rolling left and right. And that'll help spiral. And I got a nice point just to touch a little color on the house. Or if it's only a fence, that's all you need. Let's come in close and take a look at just putting some color, just touching gently over here, kind of being careful. Now, if you want a nice point, you hold the brush up. If you want kind of a dull or a, a thicker, you pull the brush this way. And so I would like a nice point. So I'm holding it straight up and down. I'll leave a little space there and I'm going to just put some color on the walls. So I have that color of brown and here's a fence post or two and there's a fence post or two over here. Little bigger ones as they come closer. So as simple as that, you've got a little bit of brown. Now, if you had too much paint, you could just blot away if you wanted it to be lighter. So let's say we wanted the side of this house to be lighter on this side. Look how I take off some paint. If you want it to be darker, you just dab it in more times or pick up some extra color. So you can change whether you want that side to be darker. I think I'll keep that side darker. Roll that corner right there. Nice clean line. Brush straight up in the air. And this side, this side here is a little bit lighter. So back over to the palette and we're going to mix the two together. So we had the, we had the blue and we had some of the brown. Now mixing them together is going to give me a gray. So I've got blue and brown for a gray. And all we need for finishing touches are some branches. And so I rolled the brush coming on over and let's just have some fun with some branches. And you think you can't paint branches. Now, the only problem with branches is if you just do one or two. But if I do 30 and I'm going this way and that way, and I'm gonna have you see the angle of the brush is straight up in the air. So you can see from here how the brush is up and down instead of painting sideways like this, like you would hold a pencil. I'm going to hold it straight up and down and that will give me a chance to just lightly touch in some places and watch this time and I'll take and push harder and I've got a thicker one. So we're going to change the thick and thin and some go left and <laughs> some go to the right. Some are straight up and down. So really, if you're not sure about painting branches, do a bunch of them in 30 different directions and it looks like a tree. Now you can look closer and see what's going on. And I'm going left and right and right and left for a couple of them, some little ones, a couple little dots for leaves. And so we'll just have a little thicker and darker branch there and one going this way, one going that way. And I can just show you, you don't have to spend a whole lot of time to learn how to paint branches. And here's another trick. Now that's wet. So what's still there is wet. And what I went over to was I grabbed some extra paint in the palette and now watch this. I'll just drop in some color and let it float. 
And so I'm creating some shading changes. See how I just touched with that color and let it float? Put a touch over here where it's still wet. You can do that. Where it's still wet, you can drop in some color. So a few more thin ones, a couple of thick ones. Branches going left and branches going right. You don't even need, if you didn't want to, have to have shadows on the ground. So the last final little ingredient, believe it or not, the finishing touch to this is going to be what's called a mat. In other words, yeah, I'm telling you, plan ahead for success and get yourself a mat. You know, it's a cheap piece of paper with four sides and two different sizes. And so we can look at the entire picture by itself. I'll set this there because I look at parts. Sometimes I like the painting in parts. And so here, a real simple art for a drip about to happen at the bottom of that. So I've got my tissue just so it doesn't drip down the page. And so we can look at it in a light mat if you want to have the whole scene, a simple little snow scene. You know, just some clouds in the background, some crunchy little snow on the ground, a house in the distance, and a bunch of branches, or sometimes a smaller view of the same scene. Works better if I get my hand out of the way. A smaller view of the same scene. That might be a possibility for the next one. Just a bunch of branches. So, I hope you had some fun. I hope you learned a little bit about watercolor. I hope you want to try it again and start with something simple as a snow scene because I'm going to show you the easiest way to do grass, not with a brush, with a spray bottle. I hope you had some fun with a beginning way to have success in watercolor. Keep it simple, have fun, and come back because I've got a couple more that you won't believe. a brush. I've got it real simple, a real simple scene, and here are the materials. As I said, we're going to use one brush, one sheet of watercolor paper, and just make sure it says watercolor paper at the store, and a magic ingredient, Kleenex tissues, so watch for that. It's going to really do be fun. And just two colors. Okay, let's keep it simple. And I want to go step by step so that someone who hasn't painted in watercolor, can have a great first experience. I want to get them hooked on the fun that you know about watercolor painting. So this is for the entry level for someone new just to have some fun. You know, if you have a rainy day on the weekend, the kids are home from school, this is it. Let's have some fun too. I do this with my grandkids. That's how I know why and how to do it. Okay, so I have uh, two colors. One is a ultramarine blue. Now what I've done is I have paint that comes in a tube. You open the cap and you squeeze out some paint over on the side of a tray. You don't have to have a palette. You can get a, just a nice big white dish. Put some paint in the corners. Squeeze out a... Hi, I'm Tom Lynch, and I have a watercolor class for the beginners. So if, if you know what watercolor is and if you've done it before, you're out of here. Or go get one of the kids or grandkids and have them take a class with you. Do this for a beginner, something for, so I'm gonna describe things as though you haven't heard that this is artist brush, not very expensive. It's a synthetic, has nine different kinds of synthetic, but one thing you noticed, it's pretty big. So it's a good size brush. And if you can, test it out, see if it comes to a nice point. So, watercolor paper, two tubes of paint, all those others, pretend like you don't see them. A tray of some kind, get a tall bucket of water, a cloth towel, maybe a sponge, we'll see if we need it. And as I said, the magic ingredient, yeah, just some Kleenex. Now, enough, or if you have a watercolor set that has different cubes that are in there, squeeze some water on top, let it set for five minutes, you're ready to go. Two colors, that one was ultramarine blue, a nice dark blue. Let's not even get fancy names. We're gonna get a dark blue and a brown. Guess what? They call the brown burnt sienna. Why didn't they just call it brown? It's what it is, but it's a burnt sienna color. You can see those two colors. I'll set them aside. One brush, and if you can find a artist brush, not a house painting, but an artist brush, and you could do it with any, but this is a 